Welcome back to Bio 2P98, Introduction to Microbiology. This second part video is here to show you the proper technique for the following inoculation methods. The simple streak technique can be done from a plate culture or a broth culture. We'll be showing you from a broth culture. Take your agar plate, make sure your labels are on the outside edge of the base of the plate so that if we ever lose the lid we'll still know what is on there. We'll be using our inoculation loop as shown here. Begin to sterilize your loop, not at the base of the flame, but at the inner cone's tip so that it's the hottest part, beginning with the base of the loop and working your way slowly upwards towards the tip, ensuring it goes red hot at every section. Do not remove the loop from that aseptic area or else you'll have to re-sterilize. Do not wave around your loop either. Be sure to just keep it within that zone. Take a look at your broth culture. If you notice that it has settled at the base of the tube, you want to make sure you adequately mix it first, either by vortexing or knocking the base of the tube as shown here to create a mini vortex. Now, as you see, it's mixed well as the turbidity is seen throughout the tube. Since we placed our inoculation loop on the bench top, we will have to sterilize it again. So again, beginning at that tip of the inner cone at the base of your loop, working your way slowly upwards towards the tip. This ensures if there's any sort of contamination on it, it's slowly heated and burned away instead of causing any splattering. Grip the test tube lid in the bottom two fingers and briefly pass the open mouth of the tube through the flame to sterilize that air. Now with our cool loop, we're gonna go inside and take a small sample. Be careful not to touch the inside of the tube in case we lose that inoculation that's within that little loop. The simple streak is simply just a zigzag pattern on the agar surface. Just press gently enough to drag that inoculation we just took onto the surface without causing any gouges into the agar. And that's the technique. Be sure you sterilize your loop prior to putting it on the bench top or putting it away. Before we incubate our plates, we must be sure to seal them with parafilm. This ensures no contamination of our plate and nothing from our organism will escape. Parafilm is gas permeable, but water and moisture will be retained inside the plate. So this is why we must incubate our plates upside down in case any condensation that forms will be on the lid and not on the surface of the agar. The quadrant streak is one method by which we can isolate a pure culture. Coming from a plate culture, you want to gently touch your sterile loop several times to the culture to pick up some inoculum. If you can actually see it on your loop, that's too much. Now generously spread this initial inoculum across one side of your plate. This is your first quadrant. We now need to sterilize our loop to remove this initial inoculum off so that we're getting less and less as we move across the plate. Once your loop is cool, Locate quadrant 1 and drag from quadrant 1 across to make quadrant 2. We're keeping these quadrants closest to the edge of the plate so that we leave the most room for quadrant 4 and hopefully our isolated colonies. Now rotate your plate again and once your loop is cool, touch it to a sterile part of the plate if you want to check. Drag from quadrant 2 to quadrant 3. Typically our sample is now diluted enough where we do not need to sterilize our loop between quadrant 3 and quadrant 4, however you still can choose to do so. Dragging your loop from quadrant 3, create quadrant 4, being very careful not to cross into the other previously inoculated quadrants. Simple streak down into the center of the plate, utilizing the most room in hopes that this area will be where our individual colonies will grow after incubation. Again, be sure to seal your plate with parafilm before placing in the incubator and sterilize your loop before putting it away. The spread plate technique or serial dilution method will isolate a pure culture. You will need a set of agar plates, a P200 pipette with tips, a stock culture, as well as several tubes of media dilutant, and a spreader of some sort, in our case glass, yours may be plastic. To begin, start by vigorously vortexing your stock culture to be sure that those cells are evenly distributed into that media. You're going to pipette 100 microliters from tube 1 
and transfer it to the 900 microliters of media dilutant in tube 2. Dispose of the pipette tip into the biohazard bag and then vigorously vortex tube 2. Now you're going to transfer 100 microliters from tube 2 and transfer it into tube 3 that contains 900 microliters of media. Vigorously vortex tube 3 and now you're going to pipette 100 microliters from tube 3 and transfer it to the 900 microliters of media in tube 4. So every time you've done these transfers, you've done a dilution of 1 in 10, or a dilution factor, which is the inverse of the dilution, which is 10. Now we need to transfer an aliquot from each of our tubes to an agar plate. Be sure to have correctly labeled the base and start with the lowest dilution, in our case 10 to the minus 3, so that we can use a single spreader. Be sure you've matched the correct tube to the correct plate. Take 100 microliters of a vigorously vortex tube and transfer it carefully to the agar plate. This means that you're bringing the pipette tip as close as you can to the agar without piercing it and slowly depressing the plunger so that you don't have splashes of that culture outside of your plate. Do the same for the next dilution up, so 10 to the minus 2 in our case. 100 microliters pipetted gently to the surface of the agar so that we don't create splashes disposing of that pipette tip into the biohazard bag between each one. Once we've completed transferring an aliquot from every tube to a plate, we're going to need to spread that out evenly over the surface of the agar so that our individual colonies can develop. We're going to do this by use of a spreader. Our case is glass. You may have a blue plastic one that's been autoclave sterile. You only have been given one, so you need to start with the most dilute sample, which in our case is tube 4, our very last plate and we're going to gently spread across the whole surface of the plate in a circular motion. Once you're finished spreading, close the plate and move the next plate into your zone of sterility and spread that aliquot around again in the same circular motion. Since we've begun with the most dilute sample and we're working our way up in concentration, we're able to use the same spreader as we're not transferring any significant amount of bacteria to the next plate. Once you've completed all of your plates, place the spreader into the bleach for decontamination or wrap in foil in an autoclave sterile. When you return to count the colonies that develop on your plates, only those plates that contain between 30 and 300 colonies are statistically relevant and can be used to calculate the concentration of your initial stock. The pour plate technique is the third and final isolation of a pure culture method. To begin, we start with empty petri dishes that will pre-label with our organism and dilution on the base of the plate and orient it so that the lid is now at the top. Our stock culture will be vigorously vortexed. We have prepared test tubes of media that have been autoclave sterile but reduced to a temperature of about 60 degrees so that they remain molten but will not kill our organism. We will begin by working within our zone of sterility, taking our P1000, taking 1000 microliters or one mil of our original stock concentration and transferring it aseptically to our first tube of media that contains 9 mils of media for a total of a 1 in 10 dilution or a dilution factor of 10. As you may have noticed, this is a serial dilution method, only in this instance we are placing the organism within the media instead of on the surface of the media like we did in the spread plate method. This is ideal for organisms that are more sensitive to oxygen and require more anaerobic conditions of growth. So as we continue our serial dilution method, we are now transferring the 1 mil from tube 2 into 9 mils of media into tube 3, disposing of our pipette tip and vortexing vigorously before transferring to the next tube. As we take our 1 mil from tube 3 and transfer it to the 9 mils of media in tube 4, we are completing our final dilution, which from the original concentration, tube 4 is now a dilution factor of 1,000 or a dilution of 1 to 1,000. Once all of our dilutions have been made, the final step is to pour the corresponding test tube into the properly labeled plate and let solidify. So simply pour the contents in, swirl the plate around so that all the agar fluid is covered onto the base of the petri dish, and then set aside so that it can solidify. The entire technique may require practice as you need to create all these dilutions and pour them prior to that agar solidifying into the agar tube. Once that happens, you can't reheat as you'll kill your organism. 
The stab inoculation utilizes test tubes containing solid agar media. Begin by properly labeling the test tube on the glass and not the lid. The tool we use is the inoculation needle, shown here. It's sterilized in the same manner as your inoculation loop, working from the base to the tip. Collect your culture, making sure that it's mixed properly beforehand. And once your needle has been cooled, aseptically gather some inoculum by just simply dipping the needle into the broth and avoiding contact with the test tube so that you don't lose that inoculum. Try to keep the tip of the needle facing down and to stab simply go straight down into the media without getting to the base of the test tube and back out. The idea here is when you're stabbing in and you want to retract the needle along the same track so that you're not gouging the media with the needle. Make sure to flame the mouth of the tube and sterilize your needle before placing away. The stab and streak method is just an extension of the stab inoculation. The stab and streak method utilizes agar test tubes that have been solidified on an angle so we create what's known as an agar slant. The bottom portion is the butt and the top is the slant. The procedure itself utilizes a stab down into the media as well as a streak along the top slanted portion. We begin by first properly labeling our test tube on the glass and not the lid. You want to collect your culture. If it's broth, make sure that it's been properly mixed and not settled to the bottom, either using pulse vortexes or the method shown here. Just as in the stab inoculation, we will be utilizing the inoculation needle, seen here. Sterilize in the same manner by starting at the base of the needle and working your way up to the tip at the inner cone of your Bunsen burner flame where it's hottest. Again, using aseptic technique, open the test tube with your dominant hand, flame the mouth of the opening, and once the inoculation needle is cooled, dip it in to take a small amount of inoculum without touching the inside of the test tube. Flame again and place away. Keep the tip of the needle facing down so no inoculum will get on your gloves. Collect your agar slant and continuing to use aseptic technique, flame the mouth of the opening prior to inoculation. Take your inoculation needle and stab straight down into the base of the agar without getting all the way to the bottom of the test tube. As you're removing the needle, you're going to streak along the surface of the slanted portion to complete the process. Again, the idea is when you're stabbing straight down into the base of the agar, you want to go in a straight line, removing it along the same track, and then streak along the surface gently. Be sure to complete your aseptic technique and flame sterilize the needle before placing away. Broth to broth transfer. Beginning with a culture broth, in this case E. coli and TSB, we're going to transfer the E. coli to a new TSB tube. Properly labeling the test tube on the glass and not the lid. Using your inoculation loop, sterilize the loop and use proper aseptic technique to collect a sample from your culture test tube. Be sure that it's adequately mixed first so we ensure we're not just transferring broth. Once the loop is cooled, dip it into the broth, careful not to lose it on the inside of the test tube, and aseptically transfer the, to the new broth test tube by simply dipping it in and mixing. After closing up your tube aseptically, be sure to flame the loop prior to placing away. This is essential when we're coming from a broth as we do not want to create splatters, so we must go slowly to ensure that the beginning portion melts, adheres, and then burns away. So no splatters are created. Plate to broth transfer. Plate to broth culture, we're starting with a culture plate and we're going to be using our inoculation loop. We're going to transfer our new culture into a TSB broth, properly labeling first on the culture tube. We're going to take our inoculation loop, sterilizing in the inner cone of that Bunsen burner flame where it's hottest, going from base to tip. Maintaining that loop within the sterile zone as it's cooling, we're going to open our agar plate and lightly touch it to the culture to collect some. Simply flame the mouth of the test tube first and dip in your inoculation, mixing slightly into the broth culture. As we've now gone from broth culture, be sure to take care in going from base to tip to sterilize your lube again to prevent splatters. 
When collecting your inoculum from an agar plate, your inoculation loop should just touch the surface of the colony several times and that is sufficient. If you're scraping it up so that you can actually see the inoculum on your loop, that's too much. Once you have your inoculum, simply dip your inoculation loop aseptically into the new broth culture and slightly mix it. Once completed, do a final sterilization of your loop.